Where's Jeb at right now? You're probably not asking, but I'm gonna tell you anyway. He is in the white room of the space shuttle. Uh, how's it going? Um, this is my take on the NASA space shuttle program, uh, and Kerbal Space Program. So this is an original designed shuttle. Um, the craft itself is fully stock, but the launch pad that you're seeing there that's got all the bells and whistles uh, is actually from a mod called Modular Launch Systems, or excuse me, Modular Launch Pads. So I will throw a link in the description to that. It's a great mod. Um, but yeah, now we can zoom in on Jeb. He's getting ready with those big eyes, throws on his helmet, and waddles back to the command module uh, so we can get this mission going. And with that, the arms swinging out of the way there, we can time warp to a good time for launch on this beautiful Kerbin morning. And there goes the arms and beanies, and preparing for launch now. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five. <laughs> Never mind the explosion, I uh, I tried to make that all badass, you know, so you could really feel the power of those vector engines in that first stage, but uh, I don't know, I ran into something and it's fine, everybody's fine, they're still alive. Uh, but now we're approaching what I think is the hardest part of the shuttle uh, missions in KSP, and that is the roll maneuver there. Uh, it just It's really hard because you've got these two opposing forces, you're trying, with the space shuttles, you're trying to put this, oh, <laughs> Try to put the center of thrust through the center of mass, right? Like, that's that's the goal. That's why those engines on the bottom have to be, uh, you know, kind of tilted as they are. But with that, then every time you want to do a roll program, you're kind of fighting, and there's a the thumbnail. <laughs> uh, you're kind of fighting against yourself. And so um, it's just really tough to get those turns. But, I mean, once you get into the correct orientation, then it's smooth sailing from there because, like I said, those engines are going through the center of mass. But... A, a tip I actually learned um, that's really useful in creating these orbiters and space shuttles is that if you have Kerbal Engineer Redux, which is a godsend, um, you can see the torque of each stage. And so while I was creating this, um, I believe the torque of this orbital stage now is like 0 0.001 kilonewton, so really good. Uh, but then that ascent stage is like 300 something kilonewton, so it's just tough to find that balance, especially when you got a payload and everything, but anyway, on to where we're at the mission. Um, now we are just about to decouple the external fuel tank, there it goes. I threw in a couple cheeky little uh, separatrons in there with about half thrust limiter, and I thought that gave it a really cool ominous look as the tank kind of just glided away from the orbit. Um, and so you're going to see on screen that, you know, I'm kind of setting up a parking orbit, but you're going to find out very soon that something went terribly wrong. Uh, so confidence is at an all-time high right now. We're flying the orbiter. Uh, gonna hop into time warp here. And there goes our payload. <laughs> so, uh, nothing that a little quick F9 won't fix. So we get to see that beautiful separation again. Um, and here is, here is what I found out to, to work to fix the problem. Um, probably took me 30 minutes to figure this out. but. Eventually, I just decided, you know what, if I just kind of wiggle this payload back and forth in a closed payload bay, I mean, eventually it'll line up, right? So, uh, yeah, that gave me a headache for sure. But, uh, yeah, so now we can get on with the mission, and here we are getting into our parking orbit using those two puff monopropellant thrusters in the back. This thing's got about a thousand meters per second delta V um, post uh, external fuel tank drop off so you know it's just enough to really do this mission um, <laughs> which I forgot to tell you so this mission we're going to be just dropping off a communication satellite at a 300 meter 300,000 meter orbit around Kerbin um, I've already completed a tech tree so there's you know no reason to really go do science so now we're kind of just doing fun stuff um, setting up communication relays things like that and what better way to do that than how we did it in real life with the shuttle so, we are on to deploying the payload. Here it comes out now. And our TWR, those minor fonts, is horrible, so I had to do a little speed up of time there. But yeah, there's our probe. It's really simple. 
I uh, I really like the look at that magnometer spectrometer thing. Uh, it reminds me of the Voyager probes with the the long communications array sticking out of it. So I threw that on there. Figured you know look cool. Um, but yeah, so now we're just time warp into our next burn. Uh, looking at the satellite as we go by, and uh, that's about it, really. <laughs> Uh, the thing with these orbiters that use the monopropellant thrusters, the burns, I mean, are so long. It's uh, it's like using nuclear engines. I think that burn alone is three minutes, and I think my uh, descent burn ended up being five minutes at the end of the mission. So it's, you know, I mean, I get that it's monopropellant, but I know a lot of people when they make these orbiters, they uh, oh, I'm not sure we're going to be landing eventually. When they make these orbiters, they use like the Terrier engines. Um, I've seen people do like clusters of sparks, but I decided to go with the monocrop on this one just because it's you know more realistic, the real thing. And let's deorbit that. I don't know why I didn't, but <laughs> yeah, don't want to be cluttering up space. And bang! So back to our orbiter. Um, just renaming it because I guess that probe decided to take over the naming of. The Space Shuttle Inspire, uh, because it was inspired by the Space Shuttle Atlantis, so you know, Inspire, Inspired, it works out. Um, but yeah, here we are, just getting ready for our descent. I think this landing took me two or three tries. It's not something I'm perfect yet, because um, really it's trial by fire. But uh, yeah, so here we are with this super long monoprop burn. Getting ready to land at the KSC. Gonna spin ourselves around. Look at the Kerbals down there, just just happy as can be. Um, but yeah, I saw that our trajectory on that map screen was gonna be just a little south, and we probably weren't gonna get as far as I'd like to. So I really just kind of burned off the rest of our fuel in this big ambiguous burn. Um, there is a uh, I forget what it's called. The little thing to leak fuel out. There is one of these on the on the bottom of the craft. You can kind of see it right there, but didn't end up needing it just because we burned it all off anyway. And there is the KSC as we are zooming past. <laughs> Had to pull off some uh, very high G maneuvers here. To slow down that horizontal speed. And you know, a little a little classic stall out, the KSP stall out, there's nothing like it. But we are miles away from the Kerbal Space Center. So why not land at the less traveled destination? We're coming in a little hot and at ninety degrees. So it might be a toughie, I don't know. But cue the action music. Yeah, that's right. Here we go. Onto the crappy island runway. As you can see, the faces of our Kerbals have gotten very serious. They know that this is mission critical right here and life critical. But uh, we're going to deploy the landing gear, really kill off a lot of that speed with one more high G turn. And coming down hard. There we go, there's the race. That little nose raised right at the end it really does wonders. And yeah, we can we can turn off that action music now. Came in a little hard there, but um, nothing that the space frogs can't handle. So now we're going to deploy the brakes, pop that drogue chute in the back so that we slow down. And yeah, that's the mission. Um, I'm currently having some issues with uploading craft files, but once I can, this will definitely be up. Um, got any questions, be sure to leave a comment, uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Hope to see you in another one. And uh, yeah, have a good one folks.